Uh, thanks very much, Bill. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, there are lots of familiar faces in the room and familiar uh, organisation, so I, I guess now's a good time to begin by acknowledging the significant investment, uh, intellectual horsepower and sheer hard work uh, that, that many of the organisations and individuals in the room have put in so far over the last four years uh, into, into making the program the, the success that, that Eddie observes from a distance. Uh, it's, it's really good to be here with many of you. As Eddie mentioned, uh, the world is going real time. And when Australia's new payments platform launches later on this year, we will be about the 20th or 22nd uh, real-time payments infrastructure in the world. Uh, there are a range of different clusters of them in Asia, Europe, uh, places like Mexico, uh, and, and Australia uh, is the, will be the most recent uh, to join that long list. FIS, uh, who is a vendor known to many of you, produce a, an annual report where they summarise the features of all of those real-time payment systems as they evolve, and they've developed uh, about 12 criteria uh, that they see uh, as being the, the, the characteristics of a leading real-time payments infrastructure. And at launch, Australia's new payments platform will have all of them, uh, which is a good place to be. There are a couple, I think, that, that stand out. Uh, 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 the settlement uh, characteristics of the new payments platform uh, provided by the RBA are, 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 are world leading in terms of continuous real time settlement. The layered architecture, so the separation of the rails uh, with the products stacked on top, starting with OSCO, uh, is also a defining feature of the, the Australia's new payments platform. Uh, and, and most importantly, I think, uh, the, 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 the adoption of the ISO 222 data standard. Is, is, is also a distinguishing characteristic. P2P payments are one of the most obvious and uh, 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 visible uh, uh, incarnations of real-time payment systems, uh, but B2B payments is where the value is. Uh, and while there's been a lot of discussion uh, about speed and a lot of discussion about how fast this thing will be, uh, from my perspective, you know, I want to begin by emphasising that, that for corporates uh, and for businesses and for industry, the, the real defining characteristic of the NPP is the data capabilities. The choice of the ISO 222 schema, which is an open XML-based data format used by financial in intermediaries around the world, uh, the information that can be contained in that, you know, stapled, if you like, to the value, and the extent to which that data can be consumed by back offices opens up lots of opportunities for, for innovation, but also automation and cost reduction and better customer service and I know that there are uh, a number of discussions through today about uh, in different forums about how the NPP's capability might be uh, might be adopted in those industries the the easiest uh, and fastest way uh, for organizations to access many of the benefits offered by the new payments platform whether they're fintechs uh, or corporates or businesses is to plug in um, you know, there's a lot of discussion about overlay services, and I'm going to come to that in a second. But, but any organisation that wants to uh, access the reach and the scale and the ubiquity and the pay ID addressing service uh, uh, that is delivered through, through an existing uh, message that's native to the, to the NPP, the single credit transfer, or uh, one of the, the, the messages in OSCO, the X to P message set, uh, with its rich data, uh, its guaranteed posting time. They just need to make one connection to the NPP via one of a number of participants who specialise in that activity, and that gives them access to reach. That's before we go anywhere near uh, overlay services. But, but of course, for many organisations, the value will come in the creation of an overlay service. So uh, if, if the existing message sets uh, aren't good enough uh, to deliver uh, on what you want to achieve, uh, then you can uh, stand up a new overlay service. Uh, that could be a simple overlay service with just a brand and a customer promise and a rule set. Uh, it could be a modification of the existing message set, adding data fields, um, uh, specifying how data is to be 
carried and managed across the infrastructure or a more complex overlay service involving orchestration uh, and, and management of message flows. So there are a range of different opportunities to, to, to participate in the MPP very easily by just plugging in and for many organisations including many fintechs. Uh, the value that the NPP can offer can be derived in that very simple way or uh, in, in more creative ways through the development of an overlay service and we expect to see those unfold over time. What might they be? Well that's a question for the market um, and that's kind of up to you. Uh, they could be uh, you know, relatively simple P2P applications or government to, to individuals or business to business payments. Uh, they could be industry vertical overlays uh, in, the, in the security space, in insurance, in superannuation wealth management. Uh, they could be cross industry or horizontal overlays and a, and a really practical example of that is electronic invoicing uh, where the data and the value can be conveyed uh, in part or exclusively by using the new payments platform. Or they could be utility overlays uh, which, which, which uh, provide a benefit for a specific issue facing an industry. So uh, assisting financial intermediaries to report uh, and to, to meet their sanctions obligations, uh, their know your customer obligations or perhaps in the fraud prevention space. So there are lots of opportunities for overlay services and I think the really exciting thing about the new payments platform is waiting to see how they'll unfold. The first overlay service, of course, that participants will see and that the market will see will be OSCO, uh, originally known as the Initial Convenience Service, uh, uh, but now BPAY have released the brand uh, for, for OSCO, uh, a core customer-facing uh, service uh, for people to send and receive payments using their existing mobile banking or internet banking facilities through their bank account with rich data, uh, guaranteed posting requirements uh, in time, the request to pay functionality, uh, confidence, tracking of payments, all of those services will be delivered uh, 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 off the bat uh, by OSCO uh, uh, and BPAY. Uh, there will be other uh, use cases for the NPP over time, so that could be in the person to person space, uh, person to business, uh, person to government, uh, business to person, so superannuation contributions, uh, single touch payroll, uh, insurance payments, instant insurance settlements, uh, B2B uh, 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 uses, uh, as well as government to people uh, uh, use cases. So there are a range of different use cases for the NPP that we've seen uh, lots of people talk about, and, and there are obviously a range of others uh, that, that aren't there and, and again this is up to the market to decide how they're going to use the infrastructure whether that's the native messages or new message sets. I know that there's a discussion this afternoon about securities uh, and a security stream that, 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 that a number of people will be participating in but here's a really practical example that I like and that's familiar to me about how the NPP uh, might, how, how its ca capabilities might be used to, to simplify and take the cost and data and errors out of a relatively uh, standard process. So, uh, you know, a, a standard retail capital raising, um, you know, I've got 100 Telstra shares, they want to raise some more capital, they offer me the the opportunity to buy 10 or 10 percent more at a discount price. The last time I did this uh, they send me a, a form in the post uh, uh, and all the costs that's associated with that. I fill in the details, I make a couple of errors, uh, I send it back with a, with a check or, a, or maybe a BPAY payment or an EFT payment. The timing for receipt of that form is driven by the current batch receipt deadline so got to be in by five o'clock Friday because that's when the last uh, you know, uh, a direct entry batch arrives. Uh, and then you've got, you know, they arrive in big crates uh, and have to be retyped, including the errors that I've made. You know, that's the kind of old way. In the future, uh, you might see an overlay service stood up by a group of participants that says, well, we're going to send you an, uh, an, app, uh, 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 an invitation to participate in the capital raising through an application uh, on your phone, pre-populated, all the data's there, I hit yes or no, uh, uh, and the payment returns with the data uh, and we remove all of that cost out of the process. Relatively simple example, um, I don't imagine particularly difficult to, ex uh, to, uh, to execute, but, but lots of value that can be created uh, for market participants. So I've talked a bit about overlay services, um, but, but how, how, where are they going to come from? How does the process work? So NPPA's role is to establish the, the, the framework and the rules to uh, consider and approve uh, overlay services for use. 
uh, proponents of an overlay service could be market participants, they could be financial institutions, they could be fintechs, they could be any combination of the above. They could come to us early in the process uh, and, and, and start kind of testing their ideas with us and get some information about how the process works. Uh, or they could work uh, privately and, and, and work up a really formed up proposal and seek authorisation and approval at the end. It's not our job as MPPA to make an assessment about the business case of an overlay service. Uh, just to facilitate the process, uh, to make it happen, uh, to consider uh, things like system stability and risk, uh, uh, and, uh, and ultimately to approve the overlay service for use, at which point it can be then be used by any of the market participants. So, uh, you know, a, re a relatively uh, quick process. Um, mo most of the information about how the overlay service process will work uh, is available on our website, or uh, by signing a short NDA, we'll provide that material to you. And and, and lots of the, while we're focused on building the new payments platform, um, which is what, what we need to do, we're also put some work into to, to, to articulating how that process will work. Uh, and we've, we're having conversations with, with scores of organisations who are interested in, in understanding more about that process. Um, in some circumstances, uh, for some opportunities, we will play a, a more active role in facilitating uh, overlay services. Uh, not, not in all aspects of the, the overlay service, just around some components of them. And that's um, you know, to avoid you know, what, I, what I describe as the kind of multiple rail um, kind of gorges at, the, at the, the state and territory boundaries. You don't want to have five different ways of paying an invoice. You don't want, want to have kind of six different uh, ways of collecting uh, or, you know, uh, data fields that contain the, 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 the GST field in a payment message. If there's value in collaborating across industries or across participants uh, to, to get a better result sooner and to remove duplication and to provide more certainty for market participants, then we may get involved and, and roll up our sleeves and help the participants um, work out how that might happen. So to, so to give you a more practical example, uh, you know, uh, uh, there, there may be value in market participants uh, working out how to, how to pay dividends uh, through the NPP. Again, a combination of, of data uh, and payment. There's a, there's a lot of activity on that space that is in what I would describe as the competitive area. So in how services are offered to corporates or their service providers, pricing, channels, risk, bundling, um, all of that stuff is the commercial space. How services and how payments are, uh, go to the end customer, the time within which that payment is made, uh, the costs involved, all of that is in the competitive space. That's not that's not any of NPPA's responsibility and, and we'll see vigorous competition between market participants. But there, but, but there may be benefit uh, in, in agreeing the data standard, for example. Um, where is, what are the fields that are collected, dividend rate, franking credits, withholding tax, and where in the message will those fields sit? Uh, and so in, in an example like that, the NPPA might play an active role to facilitate discussions with key market participants. Uh, there may be existing standards that exist that, that we just need to adopt for usage in the NPP uh, and to develop potential message structures and data fields. Maybe consider how the central capabilities of the NPP like pay ID might be augmented to support an overlay service. So for example, uh, you know, it, it could be uh, desirable to add the, a HIN, the whole Older identification number and to add that into the pay ID addressing service and that's certainly something that, that could be achieved. If that might add value then that's a discussion that we'd enter into as well. So our role might be active for some small, uh, a small number of overlay services in just one part of the overall uh, development process. One of the first things that customers will also see as well as OSCO is pay ID. And pay ID is an optional uh, component. It used to be called the addressing service. Uh, and it is, uh, enables consumers or businesses to opt in to provide their accounts a friendlier alias for use. So they'll still have a BSB and account number and they can still receive payments to that BSB and account number. They may choose to have payments uh, 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 sent to an account that's linked to say their mobile phone number or an email address. 
So, uh, you know, if I, if I get a new job, uh, I might give my boss, rather than giving them my BSB and account number, I'll give them uh, my mobile phone number and say, pay my salary into, the, into that pay ID and it'll appear in my bank account. And over time, uh, uh, payments uh, over the new payments platform, whether that's through OSCO or through any future overlay services, can utilise the pay ID. And that becomes an address to which payments or in the future requests for payment are increasingly sent. Um, from day one, pay ID functionality will also assist in resolving one of the bugbears that's inherent in the banking system today, which is the ability to move payments between accounts. So for, for NPP payments uh, only, uh, payments that, that are occurring through the new payments platform, uh, over time I might have more and more of my payments or my bills sent uh, to an account that's linked to my mobile phone number. If I change financial institutions, if I move from a credit union to a bank, uh, then I can, uh, I can uh, port my existing pay ID from my old credit union account to my new bank account and all of the payments that are linked to that pay ID will be dragged and dropped, if you like, from my old account to my new account with no further work required on my part. So as well as providing a smarter way to receive payments, uh, pay ID will also make it easier to do things like switching financial institutions. There's been a lot of discussion uh, uh, in, uh, in recent uh, months about the increased potential for fraud losses that may accompany the introduction of a real-time payment system. Um, it's certainly true to say that, that prevention of fraud losses that relies only on in-flight uh, fraud detection is going to be at a disadvantage in a real-time payment system. Today you might have two or three hours to, uh, to, 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 to check a direct entry batch uh, and in a real-time payment system uh, the, the, the amount of time that's available is, is, is correspondingly less of course. Australia's banks and financial institutions have per capita among the lowest rates of fraud of any equivalent jurisdiction around the world. That's due to things like the introduction of chip and pin, uh, 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 PCI and the cooperation that occurs between banks and law enforcement in Australia. And we expect to see that continue. The, the, the reality is, is that in real time payment systems we're not actually seeing new fraud. Um, it's, just, it's just the same old fraud that's occurring on the old payment system that's also occurring in the new payment system. And so in order, you can see here from the, this report from the, the Bank for International Settlements, the, 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 the fraud that's seen in real-time payment systems around the world, uh, number one, uh, old-fashioned social engineering scams uh, or spoofing. So that's, you know... Um, I think I'm one of the only three people left in Australia with a fixed line phone and it rings occasionally and I have to find it and I pick it up and it's somebody from Microsoft uh, or somebody from the ATO uh, or somebody from my bank, um, uh, you know, telling me that I've been, you know, my account's been compromised and if I could move all of my funds uh, to, to, you know, uh, some account uh, at COGRA, uh, then you know that'd be really good for my own safekeeping. So, social engineering scams, uh, old-fashioned trickery, uh, is where the, the significant amounts of loss occur. Uh, and, and while the new payments platform can can do lots of things, it can't prevent consumers from making these kinds of mistakes. So, so, so our view, uh, and I think you know, I know other people have a similar view that that the industry, not just the banks, but the industry more broadly, needs to step up its game around helping consumers to protect themselves against these kinds of losses. The second type of fraud typology that we see is where uh, uh, an account holder uh, has, has their credentials kind of stolen, uh, maybe through malware, and then a fraudster uh, opens up a session and kind of initiates transactions uh, uh, through that session. And thirdly, I think the one that we're likely to see less of uh, is hacking where accounts systems themselves are compromised. So, um, uh, you know, these are the kinds of fraud typologies that we expect to see uh, uh, more of uh, when the real-time payments system is introduced. Banks of course want to protect their customers 
um, whether they're liable for, for fraud losses, it's not in banks' interest for their customers to be inconvenienced by fraud losses. Uh, we see lots of cooperation, uh, lots of investment by banks in systems, visible and invisible, to protect their customers against loss. And the, the sorts of tactics that we expect to, to see in the, in the new payments platform uh, are set out there. I think number one, protect the front door. Um, uh, biometric login, device fingerprinting, um, you know, I've used the same mobile phone to log into my internet banking for, for a year and a half. Uh, if I all of a sudden uh, try and log in on a new device that my bank's never seen before, then that's a red flag. Creation of new payees, um, uh, uh, maybe continue to see two-factor authentication or enhanced verification around creation of new payees. Uh, outbound monitoring, uh, pattern screening. Uh, I send roughly the same people the same amount of money every month. If all of a sudden I clear out my account and send my life savings to an account I've never sent money to, in, to before, that's likely to be a risk. Uh, possibly some inbound screening and of course lots of uh, uh, sharing of information across industry participants. Uh, you know, blacklisted pay IDs or mule accounts will continue to see that kind of information sharing between participants. So, uh, you know, yes, there are risks in, uh, in real-time payment systems. Um, uh, consumers will continue to be subject to attacks from fraudsters through social engineering, and the industry will continue to collaborate with each other and make investments in systems to protect their customers where they can. One of the things that we're doing as well as focusing on building the system and creating the rules is getting out and about in the marketplace and talking uh, a little bit in the media uh, and to fintechs and to organisations that are keen to use the platform uh, about how they, can, how they can plug in, how they can partner with participants, how they can get access to the system uh, and how they can develop overlay services and we'll continue that activity uh, in the lead up to go live and beyond. I want to finish uh, uh, um, uh, by just a few kind of handful of, of myths, a little bit of myth busting to finish things that we hear in the marketplace. The NPP is for P2P payments only. Um, as I mentioned, P2P payments are, the, are generally the first use case uh, for real-time payment systems, uh, but, but as we've talked about today, the NPP can be used for a variety of use cases, particularly business to business, where the use of the ISO data standard uh, provides lots of benefits. Um, OSCO is about bill payment. OSCO is not about bill payment. BPay is about bill payment. OSCO uh, is, a, is a brand new service that will enable uh, fast uh, payments uh, to and from individuals, including request to, payment, uh, request to pay. Uh, third myth, uh, if I'm not a bank, I need to start an overlay service in order to use the NPP. Not true. You can plug into the NPP in many ways, directly, indirectly, as a connected institution or as an overlay service provider. There are a range of ways of using the NPP. Forming an overlay service is probably the most complex of all of them, uh, but there are lots of things that you can do without going near that space. And lastly, my favourite, uh, the NPP isn't happening anytime soon. We can afford to wait. Um, uh, there are lots of people in this room uh, and outside of this room, importantly, uh, focused on, uh, on, on testing, uh, on testing the infrastructure, uh, on making sure uh, that we continue to be on track for go live uh, in the last quarter of this year. Um, uh, shameless plug, I think Bill's already done this. Uh, you know, we're looking forward to uh, uh, hearing from our international peers about the real-time payment system and demonstrating Australia's new payments platform in Cybos, uh, just over the harbour. Uh, and finally, I'll uh, just finish the with a short video about the NPP. A world -class platform for payments innovation, helping to turn the possibilities presented by new ideas, wherever they may be, into real progress. We live in an increasingly digital economy where new ideas enhance the everyday at a pace never seen before. From settling a bill in seconds to invoicing customers and giving them an easier way to pay. Payments technology has the potential to simplify life, not just in the far future, but also today. 
Since 2013, thousands of people across the Australian financial services industry have worked tirelessly to realise this potential. People from organisations who are used to competing with each other now united by the same vision to progress payments through a world-class platform that operates to the highest standards for the benefit of millions of Australians. So what can the platform do? Firstly, it's available for use 24-7, 365, so public holidays and weekends won't slow your money down. It can clear and settle payments in near real time, enables the attachment of more text-driven documents, and can allow you to pay without remembering account numbers. Lastly, it supports many ways to pay, be it between two people or between many. Over time, Australians will have the option to realise these benefits as the platform is harnessed to create new products and services by a range of organisations from established financial institutions and insurance firms to fintechs and government departments. And it's all thanks to the efforts of dedicated people throughout the industry collaborating in a way never seen before to bring to life a platform that enables competition never seen before. So welcome to a new era of payments innovation. We're the new payments platform and we're open for progress. There's my very small disclaimer. <laughs>